Good morning, everyone. My name is Kelly Kane, and I'm the marketing manager for Wonderware California. Thank you for attending our Learn in 30 webinar today focused on Wonderware Online Insight. After the webinar this morning, we will be doing a short Q&A, so please type any questions or comments into the Q&A box, the chat box, or you can email us at webinar at california.wonderware.com. Now I'd like to introduce your presenter for today's webinar, Michael Tuffley. Michael is a Wonderware California product specialist located in Northern California. So let me go ahead and turn it over to Michael. Good morning, Michael. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, good morning, everybody, uh, and thank you for joining Wonderware California's Learn in 30 webinar about Wonderware Online Insight. Again, my name is Michael Tuffley, and I am the newest product specialist for Wonderware California, and I am based out of our San Francisco office. So, um, in today's 30-minute webinar, I will be introducing you guys to Wonderware Online Insight. Um, I'll be demonstrating all the steps involved in configuring all of your data sources, um, such as Historian, InTouch, InTouch Machine Edition, and data direct from an OPC server or a flat data file upload. Um, in the second half of our webinar, I'll show you how to retrieve your and work with your data um, from anywhere, either through the um, Wonderware online web interface or how to use the web API to retrieve raw data. First, though, I'd like to take this moment to introduce Wonderware California. So, why go with Wonderware? Well, as the leader in HMI SCADA software, Wonderware is used in a third of all of plants worldwide with over 1.6 million licenses installed. Wonderware was the first HMI SCADA solution to run on Windows and for the past 30 years has been the lowest risk, easiest to use, and 100% forward compatible and scalable HMI SCADA solution. And being backed by Schneider Electric, a $26 billion global specialist in efficiency technologies, means that we will be around to support you for the next 30 years. With local and global support and over 3,500 system integrators, um, your implementation and administration of all of Wonderware software will be worry-free. Wonderware offers a best-in-class operations management platform. It's designed to improve your plant's efficiency, reliability, and safety thereby decreasing all of your risk and overall costs. Wonderware California hasn't just been a software vendor since 1992, but we've also provided our customers with first-class support, training, consulting, industry expertise, and free workshops. We offer training and workshops at a number of sites throughout California, um, including both our Irvine and San Francisco offices. And we have a YouTube channel that hosts a number of videos, including all of our prior Learn in 30 webinars. We have two offices here in California. Uh, again, I'm based in the San Francisco office, but we also have another office in Irvine. Um, both host a number of training and workshop events. So um, if you're in the area, please check our website for a calendar of any events that you may be interested in. Here at Wonderware California, we offer first-in-class support, and it's located right here in Northern California. When you have an issue and you call our support line, one of these knowledgeable support engineers will promptly answer and help you out with any of your support issues. So begin, Wonderware Online Insight is a cloud-based solution to access your operational data. At its core, it's about keeping things simple and polished. We have customers that have literally started from scratch and they have solutions up and running, collecting data and building reports within minutes. Wonderware Online Insight is based on our Historian product. It's engineered to run as a scalable SaaS solution that allows you to visualize, organize, and monitor your data to be accessed from literally anywhere. The true benefit, though, that Wonderware Online Insight provides to its users is real-time data. It's visualized and correlated in the dashboard and it offers you context and insight into all of your operations so you can make informed decisions and improve your efficiency and your quality. An OEM vendor can provide their customers with um, information about their su supply chain. Um, management can make more informed decisions. Engineers can improve processes and they can monitor their assets from anywhere. 
The service works with an on-premise historian, any of our H HTMIs, uh, HMIs um, like InTouch or InTouch Machine Edition, um, or from say a standalone OPC server, and it can securely capture your data from any of those systems, and then it immediately makes it available to users, be either a web browser or a mobile device from anywhere. Security. Your data and SCADA networks are secure with Wonderware Online Insight. Data passes through a one-way port in your firewall and is securely uploaded and stored in the cloud. You can eliminate the need to purchase, configure, and maintain you know, a dedicated internal Tier 2 historian um, that you would use for accessing and sharing data outside of your network. Online Insight provides context for your data. With rich KPI dashboards, and combined with easily configured alerts, you'll have real-time data and notifications so that you can make informed decisions more quickly. With access from any number of devices, you have secure and remote access to your data and notifications. With Smart Glance, you get direct access to your live data, or in the event that your device is offline, you'll have access to cache data. Wonderware Online Insight is about granting the user simple and streamlined access to data. So you drive informed decision making, mitigates your risk, optimize your processes, and reduce your overall cost and downtime. Now I'd like to begin the demo with a tutorial on how to configure all of your Wonderware online data sources. So um, in this uh, portion of the, the demonstration, I'll first be demonstrating on how to configure your data source from Historian. Um, then from there, we'll go, we'll go to InTouch, InTouch Machine Edition, and then finally, data direct from your OPC uh, server and your data files. So to begin, let's, let's take a look at how to configure your Historian. So let me move over to my machine. So first, I'll go ahead and open the System Management Console and expand out the Historian hierarchy. And you'll notice that under the configuration editor, there's a replication directory. And in the same fashion that you would go about configuring a um, tier two historian, is the same way um, but we'll go about configuring our online historian. So um, I, as you can see, I've already created a, um, a replication server here, but I'll go ahead and walk you through the process so that you can do it yourself. So right click and go to new replication server. And then in this window, in this field, uh, we'll, you can put any name you want. I've selected T2 Managed Historian, um, but you can put anything that you feel is a good uh, identifier. Um, the one thing it won't recognize is an IP address. It does not need to be the, the network computer name. So uh, really just ignore that part. Um, for description, you could put something like um, Wonderware Online Managed Historian. And then from there, it's as simple as checking Replicate to Wonderware Online, clicking Register, and then you go through the process. And you'll actually notice that this is the same process that we will go through for all of the subsequent um, configurations of data sources. You just enter your username and password. You'll log in. You'll designate a name um, for the, the data source within Wonderware Online. Click OK. And then that's it. So from here, you would just click Next, OK. And then it would be ready to go as soon as we finish selecting the tags that we want to see published to Wonderware Online. So as you can see here under simple replication under the T2 Managed Historian, there are four tags that I've already designated for uploading data to. But I'll go ahead and walk you through that process. So if you have a lot of tags that you need to filter out, you can enter that search criteria here. Um, I don't particularly have that many, so I'm, I'm not going to enter any. Um, just go ahead and select the four tags that I want, move them over here. If you do want to change the, the uh, destination tag name, so how it's going to appear within um, Wonderware Online, you can do so here. Um, this one looks like the, the prefix is just the local system name, but you could enter whatever you want. You just press apply and close. And then once, once these tags appear here, you'll just right click, commit pending changes. And then when we go up to the management console, you'll notice that all of a sudden the T2 managed historian appears here and you can see that it's already begun um, uploading data to the cloud. All right, now moving on, I will now show you how to configure both InTouch um, first and then InTouch Machine Edition second. 
So here is the reactor demo um, running in InTouch. Um, for all of you InTouch users out there, I imagine that most of you are already historizing um, all the tags that you want to uh, historize data for. But in the event that you're, you aren't, I'll show you real quickly how you would go about doing that before you start publishing to Wonderwear Online. So when you open up um, InTouch Window Maker under Special, the Special Menu Tag Name Dictionary, we'll just go ahead and click Select. And then you can select from any of the tags that you want. Click OK. And then just make sure that log data is checked. And it's as easy as that. You'll go through that process with all of the um, other tags that you want to historize your data for. Then you'll open up um, Historian Publisher, which can be downloaded from the administration page of Wonderware Online. And then you just click Publish to InTouch, and you'll go about the same exact process as we did for the Historian configuration. You'll log in, designate a name for the data source, and then click OK, and as soon as you do, you'll begin uploading data like that. So now we'll go back. Um, now we'll do the InTouch Machine Edition. So the first step in doing so is configuring the Studio Database Gateway, and then we go into InTouch Machine Edition itself and do a small configuration there. So in um, the InTouch Machine Edition bin directory, you'll notice that there is a file called STADOS SVR. This is the Studio Database Gateway. So when I open it up, you'll notice that in the system tray, there's now a small icon for configuring the Studio Database Gateway. I'll just go to File, Wonderware Online Connections. And as you can see, I've already created an InTouch Machine Edition connection, but I'll walk you through the process real quick. Just make sure we um, enter uh, a connection name. And then it'll walk you through the same exact process as before. Log in, designate the, the data source name within Wonderware Online, click OK. And then just remember whatever name you gave that connection, because that's going to be important in the next step. So as you can see here, I have a demo project running in, in Touch Machine Edition. And when I open up the project, I'll go to the task page. We'll create a new trend. I'll call this Wonderware Online. Select Wonderware Historian under the history format. We can go ahead and select a tag down here that we want to um, upload to. And you can enter any number of tags um, for demonstration purposes, I just did this. Um, then we'll go ahead and select Wonderware Online Cloud under the Historian Configuration. Here is where we need to remember the connection name that we designated in the Studio Database Gateway. I called it InTouch ME. Um, if, you don't if you don't imagine that your data, uh, data source will be offline too long, so if the server's not down, then you could, it's probably advisable to do enable store and forward so that when it does come back online, it can push all that stored data. Um, if you do imagine that it's a, a uh, going to be down for an appreciable amount of time. You probably wouldn't want to do this because as soon as it comes back online, all, you know, a massive amount of aggregated data would all of a sudden get pushed forward and might jam things up. Um, these two fields you can designate tags for. So if I wanted a tag to send a status um, message back or if I wanted a tag to um, initiate a reload of the connection, I could do so in these two fields. Um, I leave the default port um, set as it is. And here's where you'll designate the server. In this case, it's just the local host. So and as, soon as, you save, as soon as you save out of that, it'll begin uploading. I already have one configured with a couple of uh, tags, so I don't need to go ahead and save that. Now, I'm going to show you how to um, upload data directly from an OPC server. Now. Um, for those of you on the call that may be uh, kind of technical laymen, you know, don't be discouraged. This is really more um, for the techies out there to kind of demonstrate the more robust features in the Wonderware online functionality. So if you don't know H um, XML syntax, you know, don't be discouraged. This is really just um, uh, kind of for the, the techies out there. So. Um, when you install uh, Historian Publisher, in its directory, you'll notice that there's a configuration sample XML file. If 
you open it up, this is basically the baseline that you'll be working off of when you'll be configuring the XML file to uh, configure your you know, data direct from OPC server source. Um, you designate the tag, tag name and all the attributes, um, you know, the source, where, where the tag is coming from. Um, since that's uh, you know, a number of tags from a number of different sources, I just decided to create a really simple one. And this is just the reactor level tag that's coming out of the local um, Modbus simulator. And once, that you, once you have this configured, and this is really, other than the description, this is just the, the base, um, the least amount of information that you can provide. Everything else is just uh, additional attributes for configuring um, those tags. So then I'll go into Historian Publisher, import XML configuration. I'll select my XML file, and it's the same process of logging into WonderWare Online, designating uh, a name for your data source, collecting, pressing OK, and it'll begin uploading data immediately. And then finally, and this is actually going to be our first glimpse of WonderWare Online, and just for those of you that want to try out um, working with the demo later on, you can either you know, sign up for a base account, or you can just click Try It Now, and you can go in and see uh, what their demo site looks like. It's really cool. So I'm going to log into WonderWare Online and go to their administration page. From here, you will click on Data Sources, and you'll actually uh, see a list of all of the data sources that I just showed you how to configure. Um, the Historian, InTouch, InTouch Machine Edition, and Direct from OPC Data Source. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you now how to do a direct data upload. So um, there's two different um, uh, acceptable formats. One is a CSV, and the other is a JSON flat data file. And you can either just drag and drop or select the files from your you know, local desktop. Or the other option is, say you have a remote user that doesn't have access to WonderWare Online, you could use, and again, this is kind of a, more for the techies out there, um, you could use the, uh, an API tool such as Postman to use HTTP POST to push the data through remotely. And it would look something you know, like this. You would just give them the um, URL and then an authentication bearer token, and then they would be able to choose you know, a, a file and, and push it through remotely. But we're gonna go ahead and show you just how, how easy it is to create a flat data file upload. So you notice that as soon as you create this source, there'll be three elements in this box, one of which is the generic um, API URL. Uh, the second is a unique uh, authentication bearer token that you would you would provide both of this information to, you say, a remote user, or your, you know you would need this information yourself if you didn't have access to um, WonderWare Online for any reason. And then here you can just drag and drop any CSV file. Um, I'm just using the sample file that they provided. We'll click OK, and it'll be available almost immediately. So um, now we're going to get to the, the real fun stuff. Um, this is going to be about how to work with all of your data, how to monitor it, manage it, um, visualize it in you know, dashboards. And we'll first begin doing it with um, WonderWare Online's web interface. And then I'll show you how you can actually pull your data back out and work with it locally in your historian client trends, Excel, um, using the APIs and uh, Dream Reports. So again, we'll start with WonderWare Online's uh, web browser. We'll go through and create um, some graphic and tabular representations of all your data that you just uploaded. Uh, we'll go ahead and set some alerts so you can see what it would look like you know, to receive either a notica notification from the web page or from your phone. And then we'll go ahead and um, create a dashboard from all the various um, uh, uh, visualizations that we created. So coming back to WonderWare Online Insight, you can see that just at first glance, the home page is a very simple, easy to use, easy to navigate web page. Um, up here, there's just a handful of icons for navigation, and then a, um, an, another menu on the left-hand side. Um, here, you'll see all of your saved content that you've been working with recently. And in the news section, 
This is a new feature. It actually tells you, you know, even if you don't have an alert configured, that you can still see like, hey, there's something kind of wonky going on with your data. So it's, it's always good to be able to keep an eye on data, even if you, it, if you not necessarily want to configure an alert for it. So you notice that as soon as I click on the search field, a number of suggestions come up. At the top, a, a bunch of saved content appears. Um, underneath that is data, both individual tags and some of the sources. So let's say I want to save, um, I want to see the tag that was coming out of our uh, DA server. As soon as I begin typing a DA server, it'll start, it'll list the tag that I'm pulling directly from the OPC server. When I expand it out, you'll get to see all of the details. And we'll add the tag, and it'll bring us to our very first visualization. So you can see at first sight, um, there's a number of, of, of stuff going on here. Um, down here at the timeline is where you can designate the period of time for which you'd like to view your data. Since I've only been collecting data for you know, a little over an hour and a half, I'll just select an hour. I can also custom uh, select a time. So perhaps I only wanted to see um, a half an hour. I could do so here. And then it's just short the time field. This isn't a very interesting visualization for this thing, but I could set, uh, say, you know, a line chart and say I wanted to take a look at the tag. I could see the, all of the details that are coming from the tag. And I can also set an alert here. So we'll go ahead and do that. There's a number of criteria for what we would like the, the alert to alarm on. So I'm going to say, well, this tank, I want to know if it ever exceeds 3,500 gallons. So let's go ahead and save that alert. So the next time that this, um, that this value reports at over 3,500 gallons, it'll send both my cell phone and a notification up here to let me know that it did so. Next, I'll want to go ahead and maybe visualize that alert by showing a limit line. So we'll go ahead and say 3,500. We'll call that the alert limit. If I don't want to see this uh, legend at the bottom, say if I want just a little bit more real estate, I can do so. Um, if I turn the auto scale off, you can see that it will divert back to whatever we've designated as the, the range in, in the tag itself. If I wanted to say add, you know, uh, some data from another source. Let's take a look at a historian. If I wanted to add another tag, I could do so from here and it'll overlay it. I also have the option of, you know, maybe if they weren't, um, if they were off by a significant factor um, and the scale was all messed up, you know, maybe a stacked visualization would be better. Um, unfortunately, when I do that, uh, it also turns off the limit line. So we'll go back to just the regular appearance. Now, we could take a look at all of the data we have from a number of our sources. Um, here's what's being pulled right now out of Machine Touch uh, or In Touch Machine Edition. And that's just a little bit too much data. So maybe I could start turning some of them on and off. I can add, say, I wanted to add some tags from you know, other sources. And you say, oh, wow, this one, now I can't see this data. So this is probably one of those instances where I would want to stack the tags. Now I'm going to show you how to go about actually saving one of these visualizations, you know, working through it, and then um, optimizing all of your visual visualizations to see, you know, what's going to work best for me. So I'll go ahead. So I'm going to use all of our historian tags. Here you can see the kind of the baseline is the um, status board, and this is all tags, so it's considered mixed data, so we're limited to the, what visualizations we can actually see. Um, if I go through and I just want to see the discrete value tags, then it will bring me to this, and I'll, I'll only have, I'll have access to a number of visualizations that are specific to that type of tag. Um, for, I think the most important one in this would probably be, say, well, let's see what was the time and state, so I want to know what time this pump was on and off, 
I want to see what the total time over the last hour was, I could do so. If I wanted to see what the you know, average that they were on or off, I could do so. If I wanted to see the exact time that they turned on and off, I would select the Gantt visualization. And then there's tabular representations. And if you just want to see what the quality of your data coming out of the, the, the server, you could do so here. More interesting, we could see, look at the actual um, numeric data in gallons. Um, right now, this, this column chart is showing me what the average was of, the, of these, the average volume of these tanks in the last hour. But I can also look at, well, what are the current values of the, of the volume of the tanks now? Or I could see what the maximum, minimum. It's probably more interesting in a view like this because it tells me, okay, um, in 15-minute intervals, what were um, what was the average volume of these tanks? For every 15 minutes, it tells me what the average volume is or what the total volume was. Say, like, if this was instead of a, a tank but rather maybe a, a pump and I wanted to see what the volume and flow was, it will actually aggregate all of those volumes and tell me what they were every 15 minutes. That's another reason why um, you know, some of the summation ones are really good because it'll actually tell you, you know, what was the total volume that passed through this tank in every 15 minutes. So going back to all of our tags, let's create a nice visualization with all of our tags. So we can create a dashboard. And then as you can see, as I move along the time axis, you can actually see the values for each of these tags change and at what time they change and, and what their actual value is. So I could say, oh, you know, this tank had 43 gallons at 9.52 this morning. And I'll go through and we'll save this visualization. I'll call it historian example. If I want um, a fixed range, if I want this to be a static visualization, I'll select fixed dates. If I want to keep more of a dynamic, so it just tells me what the data looked like for the past hour, at any time I access it, it'll, that'll be it. The keywords, this is really important because this is the index that you're going to designate when you want to create your dashboard. So I'll go ahead and call this tanks. Um, I'll want to share this with members of my team that are um, users that I created for this project and want to create an, an, an enable a shareable link so that when I go up to share, you'll see a link here. And when I provide this link to anyone that's logged in as a user for this project, they'll be able to go directly to this link um, and see what, this, what the data looks like. Um, I can also embed this if I wanted to create my own dashboard in an HTML document. Um, you know, again, this is kind of goes back to more for the techies. Um, there's some example HTML code that um, you can download in the um, online help for Wonderware Online. And all I did was uh, drop the, the links that I wanted to designate um, in the middle with the JavaScript. And when I open this up, you know, after tinkering and configuring how I want it to look, now I have my saved visualizations in a live dashboard that I can access from anywhere. If I wanted to publish this online, I could, or it's available from anywhere. Lastly, I can download it in CSV or work with it in Excel online. And I'll have all my data for the last hour. So I'm going to show you real quickly how to create a dashboard. If I select any of these indices that I've used as a keyword, it'll automatically create a dashboard for anything that's, that has that keyword. And I can go ahead and save that. And that will appear in my dashboards. So um, this is what it looks like, what the Smart Glance looks like. This is something that I actually created with this, with this exact data yesterday afternoon. Um, just a quick view. It tells you, you know, what the current value is. It tells me that there's an alarm going off, what, what, it, what the data has looked like and, you know, over the past hour. I can zoom in and actually look at what, what it is in a chart form, or I can look at what the exact values are if I select grid. And then at the bottom, if I select alerts, it'll actually tell me, hey, your, your tank exceeded 3,500 gallons. 
So moving on, now I'm going to show you how to work with your data within Historian Client Trends. So just like um, you were going to configure a server connection to your local Historian server, all you would do is designate a name for the connection, enter onlinewonderware.com in your OData feed section, log in, select You'll notice that now all of your tags appear and they're actually broken out by data source. In this example I've selected, and then you're actually able to do some of the stuff that you can't do with Wonderware Online, you know, such as like live, live replay and such. So next I am going to show you quickly how to configure Dream Report. So if you want to pull data for direct reporting. Also it should be noted that um, you're, when you install the software, you want to make sure the Wonderware drivers are selected, otherwise you won't have access to this feature. So when I open up, a, and you know, this is just a, a demo um, report, I'll go into driver configuration, and under Wonderware, you'll notice Wonderware Online Insights. I've already created one here, so I'll show you. You just designate a name for the driver, go to configure. This is a, this this uh, API is available in the administration page. So in our basic authentication, it'll just give you a unique API that's unique to your user. Now you notice this is V2, and you know why have I designated V1 here? That's because this this particular connection was uh, with, with an earlier iteration of the, the Wonderware Online API. So you just enter your username and password test your connection, and now you can go about creating reports with data pulled directly from Wonderware Online. Lastly, I'm going to show you, you know, one of the things you can do is actually retrieve data. Um, you know, this, again, this is more for the techies, but if you wanted to retrieve data from a browser or say an API tool, you, all you would have to do is enter your, you know, your, your username and password, use that unique API I just showed you. Here I've appended some, a filter so that it's only going to be pulling um, the level tag out of the Reactor 1 for the OPC server connection. Click that and you'll get to see all these live values pulled. And I can do the same thing within Excel. So if I go to data, new query from OData feed, I would just specify that URL, go through the process, I've already set it up here. And it'll actually pull all that data out and load it almost like an object viewer watch list. You can create you can create a live um, table of all your data. So that concludes my demonstration for today. Um, Again, I want to remind you all that we have a ton of videos out on our YouTube channel. In fact, this particular webinar will be available later this afternoon if you wanted to review it to walk through any of your configurations or retrievals. And again, just in conclusion, I just want to let you know that today I went over how to configure all your data sources. I showed you how to monitor and manage all of your data through the Wonderware online uh, web interface. And I showed you how to retrieve all that data and work with it locally. So. Um, it should lastly be noted that um, the first week of October, we're going to have an innovation summit. It's our annual worldwide global event. Um, it's going to be held at the Grand Hyatt in San Antonio, so I commend that to you. And at this time, I'd like to field any questions you may have. Great. Thank you, Michael. Um, we do have a few questions that have come in. Um, the first one is, can Wonderware Online Insight be used as a backup instance for a local historian? Um, I have actually had to ask this um, myself, but um, unfortunately, no. Um, there's really no um, replacement for a redundant historian server. Not only would that allow you to you know, maintain you know, constant um, historian recording and, and forwarding, but um, it, you cannot use it as an, a, an actual backup. Okay. Um, is there a cap on data storage? No, it's however, however much data you can upload, as long as you're um, currently subscribed, you can upload that data. Okay, and then how do I know my data is secure? Well, um, the 
it's built on you know both the the Schneider Electric security team and um, they worked with Microsoft um, to to ensure that all of your data is secure. It's built on the uh, Microsoft Azure uh, cloud management platform, so you can rest assured that all of your data is safe in both you know uploading and in retrieving. Okay. Well, I think that wraps up the questions. Um, let me just make sure. Sorry, I think one more did come in. Um, what is the price model? Um, I believe that the subscription is two thousand dollars a year. Okay. And does this work with InTouch Machine Edition? Yes. In fact, that was um, the the second um, or the third uh, data source that we demonstrated earlier. So if you if you miss that portion, you can go back later this afternoon, watch the video, and when we get to the, the third uh, data source configuration, you can go you can see how it works with the uh, InTouch Machine Edition. Okay, sounds great. So I think that wraps up the questions. So um, as Michael had mentioned, this webinar was recorded, so it will be available on our YouTube channel. I will also be emailing it to you um, in, a, in a couple hours. So um, thank you, Michael, and thanks for everyone for um, joining today, and have a great weekend.